Welcome back to Comics with Drew, and I am, of course, Drew, and I wanted to make a video about Matt Martin, Star Wars story group writer Matt Martin, who says uh, Star Wars canon is, quote, all fake anyway, unquote. <laughs> uh, I thought that, uh, I thought I was done with Star Wars uh, ranting personally uh, to my friends and family. But uh, then I started this channel, and you know, there's still Star Wars news coming out. And and sometimes it's mind-boggling when you hear about it. So yeah, there's, there's, been, there's been some talk recently about how canon is toxic and that people that argue about canon are missing the point of, uh, and stifling creativity. And... That's about the dumbest possible thing you can say when it comes to crafting story or stories in general. The whole point of canon is to make sure that stories make sense. And stories, the best stories, are the ones where you can get lost in them because you can suspend disbelief. They, they allow you to go to a world, forget about the troubles that you have in your real life, and understand and be wrapped up in a different kind of reality where you can be entertained and it's important that the story makes sense within the rules of the story so this is basic and and it's hard for me to understand why someone can't figure this out and it's even more terrifying from a viewpoint of being a fan when someone <laughs> who's a Star Wars story group writer, like Matt Martin here, uh, says this. So, Star Wars story group member Matt Martin recently declared that fans can pick and choose what is canon in Star Wars because, quote, it's all fake anyway. As reported by Disney Star Wars is Dumb, Martin's most recent comments came after a fan asked him to clarify his previous comments regarding Star Wars canon. Martin has discussed Star Wars canon in length. Back in April, he responded to a fan who asked about treating the, quote, old GT version of Clone Wars as canon, unquote. He wrote, quote, I'm of the mind that you can consider anything you want canon if it makes you happy. He added, quote, for the most part, it still works, but there are some contradictions with other storytelling if you really care, unquote. And then earlier he shared this io9 article and this is kind of really what what this stems from is this article from several uh, from i guess a month ago or so uh where he says basically they said our fascination with canon is killing the way we value stories wrong wrong our fascination with canon is how we appreciate stories anybody who's not an imbecile understands this so, yes, everyone should read this. It's a much more articulate way of discussing something I've often tried to crunch down into 280 characters. It's, why, it's also why I choose to not answer or give frustratingly vague answers to many questions thrown my way here on Twitter. Maybe, Matt, the reason why you can't answer questions clearly is because you don't understand what your job is. You, your job is to understand everything about the universe that you're playing in. Okay, you didn't build this. Somebody else built this, and your job is to craft coherent stories that honor the legacy of the universe you're working in. It's as simple as that. It really is. So in the article, James Whitbrook, and he's th they're talking about the IO9 article, it says, James Whitbrook, Whitbrook uh, writes, this craving for canon above all else is a toxic attitude not just to the way we talk about pieces of media from a critical perspective, but in fan circles as well. He elaborates, the hunger for facts above all else leads to things like filler episode becoming a derogatory term for series that don't advance the larger ongoing plot of a narrative or don't include some shocking new revelation that someone can add to a list. Whitbrook goes on to write, the need robs discussions about the stories we get of nuance and interpretation because who cares what you think happened when there's an answer from the word of God to let qu to that question you might have had. And more sinisterly, beyond the way it shapes our discourse, it's a craving that further enmeshes our love of a world, not to the world itself, 
but to the masters behind that world. <laughs> um, what he's talking about is people who um, place on a pedestal creators of worlds. Let's let's talk about a couple of them: Gene Roddenberry, George Lucas, uh, J.R.R. Tolkien, you know, George R.R. R. Martin. People that have created these worlds that have become incredibly successful because they cared about the story that they were building. They cared about the universe that they were building. Um, you know, another one, J.K. Rowling, uh, is a, a, another recent perfect example of this. She cared about the world that she was building, and it matters. Okay, canon matters because it gives us signposts by which we can orient ourselves in the story. Now, if you're pissed off that you don't like the person that created the world and so you don't want to respect their vision, then you need to be an adult about it and explain why the person that created the world is wrong and you are somehow all, all of a sudden right. You know, if, if you're so good at this, make your own stuff make your own world. This is one of the big criticisms that I have for The Last Jedi. There are hundreds of criticisms I have for that film, but one of the big, big, big ones that I have, and I'm going to contrast this with the new Star Trek uh, from the, the films, in The Last Jedi they do things that break canon, and when you break canon it renders everything pointless. Why care about it? if someone else isn't going to put the time and effort to make it work and be coherent. The best movies, okay, so so w if you've ever seen Braveheart, okay, the reason why at the end of Braveheart it's so emotional is because you have, the, the, the story up to that point has earned it. Let's let's take it to sci-fi, Star Trek 2009, okay? It's the, the first J.J. Abrams Star Trek, it's a, the first Star Trek after the lackluster Star Trek nemesis and we open up in the first 10 minutes of that movie there's a small miniature movie that places you in the world of a Federation starship out in the middle of nowhere that's under attack and you've got Captain or James Kirk's parents and his dad is a, is a lieutenant or a commander and you know it takes you through all of the emotions and by the time that George Kirk makes that sacrifice at the end if you have any kind of compassion in your life you are probably choking back tears because he is doing the ultimate he is making the ultimate sacrifice for those he cares about for those he loves and he's doing that because that story has earned it canon helps stories earn it. If you don't care about canon, you should find a different line of work. You should go write sitcoms. You shouldn't be writing things like Star Wars or anything that has built an entire universe. So you sure, you sure as heck shouldn't be writing for the Star Wars main story group because you're an imbecile at that point. Back to The Last Jedi, you know, the thing like with, with the uh, warp, uh, the uh, hyperspace jump to uh, light speed or whatever where they break through the other shit, you know, I, I can't, I can't even, I can't even figure out the right terminology to use right now because it makes me so angry when I think about it because it's so stupid. If you can do that, then why are you doing all these other things to try to defeat Death Stars in previous Star Wars movies if you can just jump something to, to light speed and have it break through something else, you know? You don't even have to use a person. You can slap a hyperdrive onto a droid's butt and fire it at the Death Star and destroy it. If you don't want to use canon, what that means is that you have an agenda and the agenda is not to serve those who are fans and customers of the property. And it's a disgusting thing to do and it's something you really should be looking to do. Uh, you should be really looking to take your career to a different direction if this is how you're going to act. Recently there was a showrunner who was talking about Picard. Now, I watched the first episode of Picard because it was free, and that's it. And I haven't watched it since because 
I like Star Trek The Next Generation. I'm a big Star Trek fan, as a matter of fact. But I didn't want to watch uh, a stupid TV show that tears down Jean-Luc Picard, as I know and understand the character to be. And the showrunner was saying that he wanted to make Star Trek fans angry. And and he wanted to make things difficult. Why would you do that? Why, why would... You know, science fiction fans and fantasy fans and geek culture love to argue about things because they are passionate about these properties and these worlds. You don't need to go out of your way to piss them off. You know, if, if you think that you're going to somehow draw viewership or you're going to make a quality product because your aim is to go out and piss off your fans then you're doing it wrong okay and that's why Picard is fail failing that's why Discovery is failing that's it, it, anyway that's why Star Wars before the Mandalorian has been failing so anyway so Matt Martin's back at it uh, you're right the two uh, he's replying to a tweet Sean Ferguson here says you're right the two different continuity issues there's a problem but I think that's a separate issue I don't think fans should dump anything not designated as canon but I do have to admit that canon gives them gives me a warm and fuzzy feeling and then Matt Martin says that's exactly it canon should be an added bonus but not the end all be all of a story the extended universe is no less good now than it was before due to the fact that it's no longer canon that didn't change the stories the extended universe is the extended universe, okay? We're not talking about canon as relating to Star Wars right now, specifically altogether. We're talking about canon as the as an idea of what canon is. So, the importance of canon, number one, it the importance of storytelling is trying to get people to suspend disbelief, to enter a different world where you can where things make sense and things are understandable and because and, the thing is, is that when you don't have it make sense people lose interest because they're thinking about well why wouldn't why would you not do this for example why wouldn't you just strap a hyperdrive to a droid's butt and fire it at a Death Star why am I thinking about this right now instead of thinking about Admiral Holdo's uh, you know heroic sacrifice because you know what I don't care about her heroic sacrifice because it makes no sense it's a stupid thing to do in the first place See, that took me out of the story that, because you broke canon and you failed. The movie failed. The story failed. You, as a writer, failed. All right? Anyway, that's my take on this. Uh, Matt Martin is obviously an idiot uh, if this is the way he thinks about storytelling and he thinks about canon. So you can work creatively within the guidelines of canon to do new things. Abrams actually did this successfully in Star Trek by coming up with new stories by doing an alternate version of a timeline of Star Trek. So he can, Abrams found a great way to respect the canon that was already there and to come up with a new way to tell new stories. And that's a successful way of doing it because Abrams, from everything I can understand, understands and respects the concept of what canon should be. So that's my take on it. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you heard, like and subscribe. I need to get more subscribers. That'd be helpful. And uh, if you didn't like it, well, you know, it was free. Thanks for your time. See you guys next time.